Uh, we're talking about the Minotaur. Before we begin, <laughs> uh, welcome back to Between a Rock and Olympus. It has been a long time. We're, we've been lazy pieces of shit for the last three years. But we're back. Anyways, I have a <clears> short <throat> one for you today, so it should be nice and simple. Though it's not a simple story, I guess I'll say, just for a reference. There are some interesting themes. This is not kid-friendly, just so you know. <laughs> So if you're a kid, fuck off. Get out. <laughs> Tell your mom that it's her turn now. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it like that. The Minotaur, a half-bull, half-man beast, is one of many creatures people think of today when they look at fantasy media. But why is that? Unlike mermaids, werewolves, and even Bigfoot, the creature only comes from one story within our culture. There are no other stories about such a, such a being in folklore only in modern-day depictions of fantasy. Minotaurs, much like bulls, are associated with strength and ferocity, most likely due to the tradition of the running of bulls and similar activities. From Greek mythos to modern media, the half-man, half-bull has built a very specific symbology around it. You know, they are. that makes sense that they're known for strength. Because they're, they're big buff boys. <laughs> like Arnie. I'm just imagining Arnie as a minotaur, and it's a very interesting <laughs> thing with his accent <laughs> added on top of it. I <laughs> I'm leading the minotaur army. It's pronounced minotaur. Anyways, to have the full context to the minotaur, we have to go back to its origins when Minos and his brother were fighting over the throne in Crete. To try and show that he was destined to be the leader of the island, he prayed to one of the twelve Grecian gods for a snow-white bull. To which of the twelve Grecian gods did Minos pray? A. Artemis, goddess of the hunt, animals, and fertility. B. Hephaestus, god of blacksmiths and fire. C. Poseidon, god of the seas, earthquakes, and horses. Or D, Apollo, god of archery, music, and dance. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean to sound like Patrick. But... Uh, <laughs> I am an enigma. <laughs> <laughs> I am gonna guess Poseidon, I guess, just cause. Oh, well, any any reason for that? Because he mentions horses. Like you mentioned he was the god of horses and also the sea and earthquakes for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a weird comment. Wait, can I change my answer? Is it too late? You, you can change your answer if you want. Okay. I just want to make sure there's not like a limit of time. <laughs> I'm actually going to say Artemis instead. Oh. Just because, you know, the hunt, animals, and I guess fertility. But mostly the animals part. That, Fair. That's, that follows to me. Is it locked in? That's your, that's your final answer? Not confidently, but yeah. <laughs> I'll say it's locked in, just for the sake of the moving forward. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I would also think that it was Artemis because of her, what she's the goddess of, but in fact, your first guess was correct. God damn it. After receiving the Snow White Bull, Minos was supposed to sacrifice it to honor the god that gave it to him, Poseidon. But Minos found the bull too beautiful to sacrifice and believed a substitute would do just fine. However, <laughs> offended by My Minos not sacrificing the bull, Poseidon punished Minos by making his wife Pasiphae lust after the Cretan bull. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, wait, hold on. I just feel like we need to talk about this for a second. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> so he was like, this bull is fine as hell. But then, so, because he didn't sacrifice it, because he thought it was fine as hell, Poseidon was like, well, I am going to make your wife cheat on you with a bull? With the, the bull. With the bull that he was like, oh, you're so hot, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't want to sacrifice you. You're I, too cute. You're, you're adorable. I don't want to kill. And then Poseidon's just like, well, now your wife's gonna fuck that bull. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I think it's time for another one of these. <laughs> I think the Grecians had a unhealthy obsession with, um... Fucking? Bestiality. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. But that's probably you know? worse. Yeah. <laughs> 
to fulfill her lustful thoughts about the bull, what did Pasiphae do? Oh god, why is this a multiple choice <laughs> A. She had Daedalus craft a hollow cow for her to hide inside of. B. She had Delphine craft a cow costume for her to charm the bull. C. She inseminated herself with the bull's semen. <laughs> or D. She laid naked in the pasture, hoping the bull would be confused. What the fuck would he be confused about? And I feel like you wouldn't have put C unless she did that. So I kind of want to pick C for semen. <laughs> That's not how it's spelled. But... I <laughs> Is that, it's your, fine. is that your final answer? Yeah, because I think that's the fucking most fucked up answer, and it seems like that's the one I should go with. That's <laughs> very fair. Uh, the correct answer is A. She had Daedalus <laughs> craft a hollow cow for her to hide inside of. That's kind of the saddest one, but that sounds like something a theater kid would do. A very sad theater <laughs> kid. <laughs> As a lot of them are. After the sick and twisted plot, she successfully became pregnant and bore the Minotaur child, Asterion. <laughs> Sorry, it's just bad timing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Bad timing that we happen to be doing this story right after Baldur's Gate came yeah. out. <laughs> Sorry, Asterion, you are no longer a vampire slave. You are now a bullfuck. You're all thirsting over a bullfuck. <laughs> for a time, she tried to care for the child like a normal babe. But as he grew, he became more and more vicious. Asterion was born an unnatural creature born from two who should not have been able to mate. Due to this, the Minotaur had no natural food source and began feasting upon humans. Jesus Christ. Minotaurs are a little darker than I remember them being. <laughs> As the situation grew more and more dire, an oracle named Delphi told Minos to have Daedalus craft what? A. A cage. B. A labyrinth. C, a temple, or D, a palace? Mm, I don't think a cage is very creative. And Fair. I feel like the, you know a lot of mythology like this uh, usually is pretty creative, so I'm going to say probably a labyrinth in the hopes of confusing this minotaur, because it seems like he's just kind of a dumb guy. He's just mad and starts, like, eating people out of rage because he's like, I shouldn't exist. You are correct. Um, Fuck yeah, I finally got one. <laughs> I'm finally not a failure. <laughs> Sometime after Asterion was trapped near the center of the labyrinth, his half-brother, a full human child of M Minos, was killed. There are several variations of the story of Androgeus' death, but... All of them place blame on the king of Athens, Aegeus. Some claim that Androgeus was killed by Athens due to their jealousy of the victories he won at the Panath... How did you say it? Panathenaic Games? Jesus, why do they have to come up with such creative words? Others claim he was killed at the Marathon by the Cretan bull, the father of Asterion, because Aegeus had commanded him to kill the bull. Minos, enraged by the loss of his son and seeking vengeance, waged war against Athens and won. Oh, damn. His vi this victory then came with regular sacrifices of young Athenians <laughs> to Minos. Wait, okay, before we move on, I just want to ask a question. Yeah. Um, so this guy, Minos, mm -hmm. was a real dick about the way he won this war. <laughs> Because he said, okay, now you guys have to, like, sacrifice young Athenians, so people, mm -hmm. to me, a person. Yeah. Not, like, a god or anything. No. Just, like, a dude. Which is kind of hilariously petty. I gotta be honest, I think that's funny. However, according to Catalyst, the story most connected to the story of the Minotaur uh, claims that a cruel plague made Athens pay for the death of Androgeus. In order to stop the plague, Aegeus sent young unwed Athenian girls to on a boat to Crete every seven years to be sacrificed to the Minotaur. Hmm. When the third time to sacrifice came, Aegeus' heir, Theseus, volunteered to slay the Minotaur to stop the sacrifices. According to Socrates, Theseus would rather die than continue this tradition. I don't blame him. This is really fucking sad. All right? Like <laughs> These poor little, like, oh, well, they, no one married him, so just let the fucking bull thing <laughs> eat him. That's fine. Like, fuck off. 
I don't understand why virgins are always they're always the target. Virgins are always the target of like mass violence in Ugh. in these like ridiculous tales. Like yeah. it's it's so sad. Like what is it with the genocide of virgins? Like I don't I don't get it. Only it only ever seems to apply to girls, which is weird. Like no one's ever like, "Hey, you see all those kids playing Magic the Gathering at that lunch table? Kill them." <laughs> that's never virgins. a thing. No one cares about little boy virgins. They just want to kill all the girl virgins and sacrifice them to a minotaur. <laughs> minotaur. I don't know. So I'm not sure how it should be pronounced because technically minotaur um, literally translates to the bull of Minos. Um, oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. So I'm not sure if it should be minotaur or if it should be Minotaur. Theseus made a promise to his father and plans for how he would return if successful or unsuccessful. If he succeeded in slaying the beast, Theseus would sail back with a white sail. If he failed and was slain, they would keep the original black sail up. With the plan in place, Theseus sailed with the unwed women to Crete. Adoring his courage and sense of justice for the young women, Ariadne, the daughter of Minos, fell in love with Theseus. So much so that she helped him navigate the labyrinth so that he could return to her. What did Ariadne give Theseus to help him find his way back out of the labyrinth? A. A loaf of bread. B. A bag of stones. <laughs> C. A bag of candy. Or D. A ball of thread. Uh, a bag of stones is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I just... <laughs> I, I think it's funny that they're the idea that they might have just been like, I'm gonna leave a trail of stones for you. <laughs> like, but I also think that the C is funny because like a bag of candy, that's just like that fucking episode of Family Guy where James Woods is getting lured in. Ooh, a piece of candy. Ooh, a piece of candy. Like it's just the same. So a loaf of bread doesn't seem all that helpful. Fair. Because then like ducks will eat your bread and <laughs> you don't you know. Are you there don't. a lot of ducks in the labyrinth of You don't know that. Maybe. They can fly. They can go wherever they want. <laughs> I'm gonna say a bag of candy, because that's my, just my favorite answer, to be honest. That's very fair. And I want it to be that. So the correct answer is D, a ball of thread. Oh, I'm just lame. So he would, <laughs> he took the thread, like, around all the corners so that he could follow the thread back to where yeah. he came from. I guess that one makes the most sense, but I wanted, to, I wanted it to be candy, so I'm gonna believe it's candy even though it's not. <laughs> there are different variations of how exactly Theseus slayed the Minotaur. Some say with his bare hands, others say with a club or a sword. No matter which way he did, he finished off Asterion and led the Athenians out of the labyrinth, taking Ariadne back home with him. However, in his return home, Theseus forgot to change the sail to a white one. Aegeus, seeing the black sail from his lookout on Cape Sonion, threw himself off into the sea, killing himself, leaving the throne for his son Theseus to take over. Damn. But so Aegeus is the father of Theseus. Yeah. But because of a flag-related mistake. Yeah. He just is like, oh, I guess I'll just kill myself. Because he, he thought that Theseus had died. And so he felt no reason to stay. Theseus, you dumb bitch. Oh shit, I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> oh fuck, my dad's dead. Outside of this story, there's only one other historical text that speaks of him, Dante's Inferno. When Dante and his guide Virgil are preparing to enter the seventh circle of hell, they spot the Minotaur among the men of blood, those who are damned for their violent natures. Upon spotting the creature, Virgil taunts him, reminding him of his downfall to the Duke of Athens and his own sister. You think, perhaps, the Duke of Athens, who in the world would put you to death? Get away, you beast, for this man does not come tutored by your sister. He comes to view your punishments. Damn. That's a pretty ball. <laughs> Beyond this, there are no other tales of a half-man, half-bull in mythology or even current sightings of such a creature. Instead, we are left with several retellings and new variations of the creature in modern media. Why do you think such a creature was made up? Mm. I don't like the lack of multiple choice. <laughs> it's more of a creative, write your own answer, there are no correct answers. Yeah, but I'm really dull. <laughs> uh, I assume for a similar reason to a lot of mythological stories are written, uh, which is like to have some sort of moral imposed on the people who read it. Fair. Um, that's usually what it is, where it's like, I guess the moral here is like, don't fuck bulls. I don't know. Like, 
<laughs> That's the moral of the story. Or sacrifice the bull that Poseidon asked you to sacrifice. Otherwise, yeah. he's going to make your wife want to fuck a bull for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what the takeaway here is. Like, Poseidon's <laughs> petty? I don't know. Like Poseidon is petty. Poseidon's weird, actually. <laughs> like, he's just a weird fucking guy. And I weird. think I think it's just one, another one of those weird stories that humans made up at some point. That's most mythology. Some people have made some different connections and theories about why the Minotaur has the specific symbology that it does. Many have come up with connections between the story of the Minotaur and the story of Dionysus, such as Carl Carinier, as Asterion had several symbolic references to being a god of the stars. J.G. Fraser and A.B. Cook both claimed that the union of Pasiphae and the Cretan bull were incredibly similar to the sacred ceremony where Dionysus was married to a queen. Much like this, the union of her and the bull may have been a sacred ceremony where the queen of Gnosis was wed to a bull-formed god. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Coins minted at Gnosis from the 5th century depict a bull's head or a star at the center of a labyrinthine pattern around them. Similar connections were made by 19th century mythologists who proposed that the Minotaur was a personification of the sun and was the Minoan adaptation of Baal Malak, who was a Canaanite god with a bull's head whom children were often sacrificed to. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I mean, I see the connection, but like, Christ. Yeah. <laughs> anything, you could eat anything else. You should sacrifice basil leaves to me. So you could just <laughs> sacrifice anything. It doesn't matter. It's you alive. You should sacrifice pizza to me. <laughs> that, that would be the thing. That would I be would Raz. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> sacrifice pizza to me. Bend unto my will and bring me the bread with the cheese and the sauce. I mean it. Or face my wrath. I guess you'll face my wrath if you don't bring me sauce. His, his wrath being his digestive system. <laughs> You weren't supposed to tell them about that. <laughs> but I'm actually quite happy to use it as a weapon. A.B. Cook claims that Minos and the Minotaur are one and the same, just different personifications of the same person or being. A sun god of the Cretans, who often depicted the sun as a bull. Those such as E. Portier suggest, after referencing the story of Phalaris, that this tale could also be about an insidious bull cult that may have existed in Labrys. I think they're missing the opportunity here to call it a bolt. <laughs> Just saying. Where victims of the cult would be shoved into the belly of a red-hot brazen bull. On top of this more realistic scenario, strange and cruel bellowings were often heard at the time of this happening, which could have spread the fan fantastical nature of the stories. Um, question. Yeah. What is a cruel bellowing? Like, <laughs> like a, where you you're bellowing insults at someone. <laughs> like you're a bitch. Like there's just strange noises in the area that sound like people yelling or something like happening. You know, something sinister, like a creature that's like yelling in the night or something like that. Of course. A science journalist, Matt Kaplan, says this could be explained by extreme tectonic activity in the region. Oh, that makes sense. I suppose I could see that, you know, continents scraping against each other might make a fair bit of noise. I could see why that would be a thing. <laughs> Beyond this, there isn't much of anything to claim that the original tale of the Minotaur has any reality to it. Even though Minos Palace was eventually discovered in Gnosis, the labyrinth never was. Really? Mm -hmm. No way. You mean to tell me the labyrinth from a mythological story was never found? <laughs> oh. Color me shocked. Some people tried to make the argument that his palace was a labyrinth because it has over 1,300 different rooms. I um, could see that being a bit overwhelming. But, you know, most historical people have been like, mm, <laughs> that's not really a labyrinth. That's not. <laughs> that's something just a palace with a lot of consider... fucking rooms. In it. <laughs> Scientifically speaking, this is a palace with a shit ton of rooms. So okay. there's just no there's no spot that makes sense for the labyrinth to be. So therefore so, so this is all bullshit. Idea is that either this is a big symbolical story about a sun god being created and then killed off. Because he was a dick. 
<laughs> and eight kids. Which is a dick move. Or this is a melting pot of many different gods. Sort of their stories all being scrunched together because they all have bull symbology in them. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a lot of places where there was information on Minotaurs that was like about their lore or about anything beyond that. I hope you've enjoyed the tale of the Minotaur and Minos and Greek crazy mythology that always seems to have bestiality in it somewhere. <laughs> and Greek people will be like, you can't marry someone who's not Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> you fucked bulls. Or at least you wrote about it. You wrote fan fiction <laughs> about fucking bulls, which is even worse, actually. It's, it's, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. It's a weird fetish. Hopefully we will be back with another one soon. Bye, bitches. Oh. My BS stands for ball sign. Would you like some? Sure. <laughs> You're gonna have to deal with me for however long this recording goes, so... It shouldn't be too long. It's a short story. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean for that to um, come off as a negative. It's okay. It's fine. We're just going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Some claim that Androgeus was killed by Athens due to their jealousy of the victories he won at the Penith... The <laughs> I hate that so many of these words are so hard to pronounce. Panathenaic. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, who, who, which one was the host again? <laughs> I love you. Andro, Androgeus, and, Androgeus? Maybe Androgynous. That's how, <laughs> that's how his name looks. <laughs> of the victories he won at the Pathenaic Games. Do, do you want to try that line one more time? I, so don't think I'm, one in? I don't think I'm going to get a smooth one, but I will try. Panathenaic. Panathenaic. That's just how I imagine my choir teacher would do, because it was a lot of times it was just us going, <laughs> It just wasn't coming out. That, that'll help with that. I don't, I don't know that it will, but... Were you trying to unscrew the cap that wasn't there? Yeah, hey, I didn't really do it at all. <laughs> Sorry, I probably should have said something. Why am I stuttering? Can I tell you something funny? When I saw the words sail back a little bit ahead of when you were reading, because I was reading the script along with you, yeah. I, I accidentally misread it as ball sack in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted you to know that. All right. <laughs> Rest in peace to Michael Clark Duncan. You don't even know who that is, do you? Nope. <laughs> I know. Piece of shit. <laughs> Uncultured swine. Poop. It... <laughs> that out Would it there. be... B U L L T or no, just B U L T. That's probably enough. <laughs> Bacon, underwear, lettuce, tomato. <laughs> underwear. <laughs> the first U word I could think of. <laughs> underwear. <laughs> <laughs> It was either that or bacon eunuch and lettuce to me. <laughs> Why eunuch? Why is that the secondary option? I don't know. I have weird words in my head loaded up for the letter U, apparently. <laughs> bacon eunuch lettuce tomato. <laughs> Bolt. Anyways. Um, you have a small dick, Toby. Is that good?